first I want to kind of introduce our audience to you and what sure. it is you do and kind of your background. And then I want to talk a little bit in more detail about, you know, what you're seeing out there is kind of the exciting things that are going on in this space right now. Sure. So, Robert Scoble, when I first met you, I guess it was a couple of years ago, you were still at Microsoft. Yeah. Um, kind of give us a little bit of a, an arc of what your career is like and how you've ended up here at PodDeck. Well, I, uh, in the 90s, I was uh, an editor at a computer magazine and helped plan a lot of uh, programming conferences, conferences for programmers. And um, that got me into blogging because two of the speakers, you know, suggested that I start a blog. And that got me into a whole raft of jobs going into uh, Microsoft. And I, even before I worked at Microsoft, I was blogging, and uh, I, I would say pretty bombastic stuff, like Microsoft should split itself up and other things. You know, I'd point out when they're good and when they're bad. And I was generally an evangelist for, the, for their products anyways, because I liked, like I, I loved their tablet PC before I worked at Microsoft. And that's how I got found. I would actually, at NEC, I was selling a, uh, tablet PCs for NEC and an executive at Microsoft saw me on a web forum and um, it, you know started reading my blog and bought one and and then four months later invited me up to Microsoft for an interview um, and while at Microsoft blogging took off right when I joined Microsoft there was already 80 bloggers at Microsoft when I left there was about 3,000 maybe even more it's hard to count them all but talk a little bit about what it was like when you walked in the door up there and because blogging wasn't really part of the culture was it well that's not quite true blogging might not have been but talking to customers was they they had already had lots of forums in CompuServe in the early 90s and on uh, NNTP news groups or new, you know the newsreader uh, Usenet newsreader uh, groups um, in the middle of the 90s on, on even today you can go to Usenet and find thousands of groups where people talk about Microsoft products. So they were already adept at listening to the, com com to the customer and talking with them and stuff like that. It's just when Google came out in the late 90s, that changed everything because people had an expectation of using Google to find things rather than going to news groups, which were full of noise and, and hard to find who was really authoritative in those groups and who really could get your problem taken care of and stuff like that. Uh, on blogs, the people who get linked to a lot would show up high on Google. So those were the more authoritative people. And certainly when you do a search on Google now for OneNote blog, you'll find like Chris Prattley, who runs the OneNote team, and you'll find all of his uh, um, coworkers and, and workers. And so you'll be able to talk directly to the people who make the product. That's a, that is a huge change from the way it was you know, five or six years ago. So then you're up in Redmond, and you've been blogging for a little bit, and then you pick up a video camera and start poking around into uh, the corners of the cubicles. So yeah. How did that go well, on? there was five guys. We, I was part of this. Uh, I don't even know if we called it Channel Nine back then, but we were on on the evangelism team, and we had just gotten home from a conference that we we held. Microsoft puts on these big, you know, developer conferences every year, and about seven thousand, eight thousand people show up to them. And we got we got home, and we were comparing notes, like what changed. You know, how, how do people react to it? What should we have done better, et cetera? And we noticed that people who met us face to face would always say, you guys are a lot less evil than, uh, than you seemed to be before I met you. <laughs> you know? And so in other words, people who met a Microsoft employee had a different perception of the company than people who didn't meet the, the, an employee of the company. And so we were like, well, okay, 7,000 people in a room, we're only going to be able to talk to maybe 800 of them, you know. So we're not going to be able to change the perception very fast doing conferences. So how else could we get people to talk to to an employee and get them face to face? And that sort of led into, you know, I had lunch one day with a, a developer. And I was, he was showing me some really cool stuff that now is uh, Windows Presentation Foundation. And I was like, man, why don't, you, why don't we just put this out there on YouTube? Or uh, YouTube didn't even exist back then, but on, out on the internet, and put it out as video so people could watch it, and then people could have conversations with you. I mean, I, you know, I wish everybody in the world could be at this, you know, uh, cafeteria table with you because they would see a whole new Microsoft that than people ex saw before. And so that led into us buying some $250 cameras, not even as nice as the ones you have, you know, in fact, really cheap compared to the one you have. And, uh, you know, we would just walk into somebody's office and, and no lighting, you know, no tripod, no, 
no audio guy, you know, very low cost, and just, you know, hold a camera like this and, and ask somebody, you know, who are you and what do you do? And, and uh, in two years, we did about 600 interviews. And uh, when I left Microsoft, that, the Channel 9 website got 4.3 million unique visitors. So all with no PR, no links from Microsoft.com, you know, yeah. just on its own, people finding it and then telling their friends about it or posting about it on Slashdot or on Dig or on other sites like that. So. Now before people like Robert Scoble walk, came along and the rest of your team that was there, you know, corporate communications and the way corporations get their word out to the mass public was a very kind of exact science. Oh, it, they, my, at least they would want you to believe that. Oh, absolutely. Microsoft has a, a multi-million dollar TV studio, probably better than the one at KRON. It, it was famous when it was built for being all digital and really beautiful and, and now famous artists go there to record and stuff like that. Um, but I messed with them, right? Because <laughs> I showed that you could actually have a better relationship with the customer without all that, without having all these intermediaries and all this scripted, you know, professional content. I think, you know, going back to the blogging thing, I, I was early in the blogging world and we had a little weblog uh, user group, I guess, here, that met here in uh, Mountain View at D Dana Street Coffee. In fact, most of the uh, innovators in the in the world that we know about, like Evan Williams, who started Blogger, and uh, Ben and Mina Trot, who started Six Apart, and Brad, and I forget his last name, who started Live Journal, was there, and Dave Weiner was there. You know, 40, 30 or 40 people showed up, and now they're all people who we recognize as having done something in the social social media space. Um, one common thread I saw coming out of out of that group was we were sick of the committee-based marketing. I mean, you stand out in Times Square in New York and you see hundreds of marketing messages coming down on you. And all of them are d done by committee. All of them are, make you feel emotional about a product, but they don't tell you anything, right? You see a Sony camcorder ad and a Canon camcorder ad and they don't tell you anything that's different or better or worse about their products. They just make, you know, have a, have a nice looking camera and a, and a well-designed logo. And we were sick of that kind of marketing because we wanted to be able to figure out what was going on inside the companies and, and in, we wanted to know more about the product than you get on CNN in two minutes. You know, Even this interview will probably be cut down to five minutes and we had like a half an hour conversation on two separate days, right? Well, you could have put all that video up on the internet because the internet doesn't have, um, doesn't have limitations on the amount of time that you can put something up for. There's no limitations on distribution of content, right? Well, funny you should say that, because we are planning on putting the whole unedited interviews up on Front4.com.